So, full tang knife. As you can see, I heated up the section of my tang on the throat of the knife or the ricasso. I want to thin that out a tad. So I'm lipping over my anvil edge and I'm starting to thin that out. So what I want to do is create a small basic little V. What you can do as soon as you see that little hump happening, hammer on the spine, supporting the knife at the back. Hammering on the spine, which will then dip the blade back down and continue hammering. Okay. I'm going to, on the next heat, work that a bit more. As you can see, the deformation of material in here, I'm going to then work it flat. So coming in, we go. I still want to work down the throat of the knife. Still creating that slight distal taper, or not distal taper, but taper. I want that knife to curve ever so slightly. Now I'm going to flatten up all my high spots and I'm down to an 800 gram hammer. I'm doing this very lightly. I don't want to hit dents into the casso area of my blade. Gently coerce the material. Okay, back into the forge. Okay, so I'm quite liking the taper. What I now want to do is still just continue taking out the high spots in the Ricasso area. Ever so slightly, working on both sides of my metal. And you're obviously noticing a lot of quick blows, not heavy blows. I'm working on the edges, avoiding the middle or the center of the material. Therefore, creating a nice flat surface. All right, so the next step would be for me to measure and kind of decide how long I want the handle on this knife, um, it being a full tang blade, as I would measure from there to where I want my handle to finish and make sure that that is at least 100 millimeters in length. So I've got my ruler, 100 millimeters. I'm going to mark on the top and then take that mark over to the edge. Okay. Now, uh, for our American and European, European friends, 100 millimeters is about four inches. Okay. And that is measured on the inside, so the finger side of your knife. Okay. So I've got, in millimeters wise, you've got about 10 mil space on this side. And uh, if I have to draw out the tang, so the blade side is on this side, I'm going to do a bit of a curve and I'm going to tail it out okay so from here to there I do a hundred millimeters a uh, hundred mil is gonna put it about there so now I'm just drawing out what I want to have happen here like that and uh, now you've got a couple of choices you can either go and cut this off with an angle grinder or, or with a hot cut hardy so what we're going to do is we're just going to chop it with an angle grinder. It's been cut off and uh, I just want to show you guys something that uh, that little burr. just want to mention again and I have mentioned this previously that whenever you do a cut with an angle grinder you end up with burr on that side which you obviously need to grind off and then that end of cut that you need to get rid of as well. Okay, You don't want to let that forge over and uh, cause cold shuts in your metal. Yes, I know it's on the tang, uh, but uh, that's a good rule. Whenever you cut something, clean it off before you start uh, forging it. Okay, so we've got that cleaned off nicely, and now it's into the forge. Obviously, okay, so obviously I don't have a bar to hold on to my steel anymore as I cut it off. So uh, what we'll now be doing is uh, using these. These are referred to as box tongs or box jaw tongs and as you can see the jaw of the tongue is in a box form enabling me to pinch my steel let me just grab this yes this is cold grab it and for now whatever reason if I'm hammering it doesn't jump out okay so if I've got it over the, the edge of the anvil and I'm hammering to that point it's not being flipped out of uh, my tongs good Good, good investment. Uh, this and just the straight jaws is brilliant to start off with. 
Okay, so obviously I can't hold it there and forge it there, so my blade will be flipped around. So I'll be holding it onto like this and then hammering my tang. Okay, so my tang is all heated up. All I want to do now is just bend my metal ever so slightly, hammering the middle, same technique as used on the edge, and I've got that sexy little curve going there. I don't want to taper the tang, I don't want to taper the tang, but I do want to just clean this off. prefer to hammer things to completion. When you take the time to hammer a blade, you might as well hammer it to 100%, well, as close to 80% completion as possible. A lot more uh, hammering, less talking. Back into the forge. Okay, so I'm still working on my tang. Like I mentioned, I want to taper this tang. I do want a bit of sexiness in it. Okay, but basically what it boils down to is uh, there are reasons for whatever reason you do not want to take the tang of your knife. It doesn't mean that you can't have a nice looking tang. Okay, so uh, there we go. I'm quite happy with the results that, that we have there. It is smoking hot. Okay, so uh, there is a little project completed.